Welcome to this last of our Holy Week talks. We end this week standing at the foot of the cross on Good Friday. And what a cross it is. Painted by Matthias Grunewald in about 1515. The same date as it happens as the Bruin triptych in the cathedral. This is one of the most graphic presentations of the crucifixion that I know. It was painted as part of an altarpiece which has many sections and it hung behind the main altar in the chapel of St Anthony's Monastery in Isenheim in Alsace. I saw it there many years ago. It no longer ha hangs behind an altar. There were no holes barred as Grunewald paints this picture. He shows us how horrific pain and suffering can be. The scholars say that he combined the mysticism of the Gothic Middle Ages with the techniques of the Renaissance to create this disturbing vision. More than that, perhaps the history of the time had its part to play. This piece comes from just before the violence and horrors that were unleashed in the convulsions of the Reformation. Last year, I read a novel which has the letter Q as its title. It takes the reader on a strange journey through the early years of the 16th century, and it sets out more graphically than I've read elsewhere the pain and the inhumanity of the age. Grunewald shows these same things in his painting. Looking at the painting, we are appalled. The crown of thorns is monstrous. The body of Jesus is torn and lacerated, and a close-up picture would show us hundreds of embedded thorns. Every nerve is taut, the skin is stretched, just look at the flesh beneath the arm. The feet are battered out of shape and somehow magnified. The wounds are turning blue. Here is a body mangled, dishonoured and lynched. And the last touch of squalor is the cross itself. Botched together, the crossbar bends under the weight of the body and so the fingers are dislocated and expanded like a spider's legs. And yet, somehow, as Patrick Lee Fermer says in one of his books, some exempting streak of genius saves this picture from the excesses we find in other pictures of the Gothic school. Yes, there is pain, extraordinary pain, but it's a feeling of intense drama and tragedy that has the last word. And the figures on either side are important too. They are racked with grief. Mary collapses and is held by John. She's either fainted from exhaustion or she needs to shut out the vision of her crucified son. A sword has pierced her own heart also. John, the evangelist, as he supports her, moans in despair. And on the right-hand side, John the Baptist stands, barefoot, apparently unbowed by the horror of the moment. He is unflinching in his prophetic conviction. He will increase while I must decrease. The words that he had once spoken are painted in red behind him. And Mary Magdalene, on her knees, is in agony at the foot of the cross. What then should we say? Remember, this was painted for a hospital chapel. And some argue that Grunewald based his image on, of, of suffering on the torments of patients he saw as he went about his work. Would this painting be a powerful image, even a support in a hospital where many knew painful skin disease. 
Remember too that this was part of an altarpiece with many panels. When the outer panels were folded back, different scenes from the Christian story were revealed, including a great picture of Jesus rising from the tomb on the third day in vivid orange and red and yellow. That is just as overwhelming in its turn. But for now, we can't escape the cost of it all, the cost of Christ's selfless love, the cost of his obedience to his Father's will, of what it means to say that God so loved the world. There's a poem by Grunewald's exact contemporary, John Skelton, that captures this painting's mood for me. It has the lines, Woefully arrayed, my blood, man, for thee ran. It may not be neighed. My blood blue and won, woefully arrayed. What might I suffer more than I have done, O man, for thee? Come when thou list, welcome to me, woefully arrayed. Amen. Thanks be to God. Almighty Father, look with mercy on this your family, for which our Lord Jesus Christ was content to be betrayed and given up into the hands of sinners and to suffer death upon the cross, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.